hard to overstate how important that getting kids back into school is. Um, it's clear that the, the trauma that people suffered in the in the cyclone, many of them, that's been well documented now, adults and children. The best way to, to deal with that trauma is, is to normalize the lives of children, get them back into a routine, um, enable them to, to pick up uh, what they were doing before the cyclone. There's a huge demand for this from communities and from children. There are th about 400,000 children you know, who, have not, who, are not, who are not able to go to school because of the cyclone. Now, we've managed to get 100,000 of those kids back into school through the rebuilding uh, of, temp well, building of temporary schools using very inexpensive uh, materials. You know, they've got, there's teachers there, there's teaching materials, and their education continues. And also, we've, we've about 200 schools that were quite badly damaged, but not so bad that we couldn't rehabilitate them, so, you know, putting a new, a new roof on it and that kind of stuff. And between those two, two things, we've got 100,000 kids back in school. Um, we've, had a, we've had to fund all of that work with private foundations, and some of the Scandinavian governments are keen on this, but the, the American government, the British government, um, European Commission, none of those important donors um, fund education in practice in the, in the weeks following this type of emergency. I can't imagine people going in and, and, and seeing a school that is being run under, you know, under some plastic sheeting with a teacher that's incredibly motivated, with 50 kids that really want to learn, and I can't see going in and seeing that, um, and people wouldn't be moved. I mean, it's, uh, it, it seems like such a, a crazy thing not to be doing after an emergency.